So I'm always looking for ways to better organize my shop. And one area I could really improve on is to organize all my extra sockets that I've got collected here in this box. So what did I do? I made these. I call them socket shelves. It's a 3D print with pins on top to hold the sockets and a couple pins at the back to go into the pegboard. And once you have your sockets on it, even if you bump your bench, they don't go anywhere. And this makes a nice Father's Day gift for anybody looking for ideas. And this is actually a very easy print to design in Tinkercad. So I'll show you how I did it on today's Film of Friday. Here's the finished unit in Tinkercad. I'm just going to slide this to the back and just show you how to make one. I started with a block, 116 millimeters by 29 millimeters and seven millimeters tall. And then I just added a cylinder and I sized this eight millimeters by eight millimeters and then 16 millimeters tall. And then I just duplicated it and offset it by 25 millimeters. So this one's at 13, add 25, puts it at 38. So I just enter 38 and the duplicate now shifts over to its position 25 millimeters away. And then I just repeat this over and over again. It's kind of crude in Tinkercad and there may be an easier way to do this but this works for me. And then once I've got all the pegs in place now I just need to center them and group them together so they're one whole unit. So first thing I do is grab them all, go to the align tool, center them to the block and now I grab each one and group them together as one unit because now I can align them to the block in the, in the front because they're a group. They're not going to all jump together. So now I need to put the pins on the front or the back, however you look at it, for the pegboard. So I moved the work plane to the side, bring in another cylinder, and made this thing 6.2 millimeters by 6.2 millimeters and 10 millimeters deep. Now here's the trick. I bring the uh, ruler tool over and then I reset the pin to zero and now I want to go exactly 106 or 101.6 away because that gives me four inches which uh, the holes in the pegboard are set to. And then I group those two together, slide them up to about where they're centered and then I just use the uh, uh, adjust tool, the align tool, to align it to the block and then group everything together <laughs> and I've got the, uh, the platform. Now I did go back and resize those pins. They look a little smaller than the other ones because these are actually the top pins are actually six millimeters instead of eight millimeters. I went back and did that even though I didn't show you on the screen here. So once I've got those two, the small socket one and the larger socket, I brought it into Simplify 3D for the Flash Forge Dreamer and then I picked the left extruder and I put it at a 0.25 layer height, three top bottom layers and 30% fill. Now as additions, I didn't use a skirt or brim because this stuff sticks pretty good, but I did generate supports for underneath those pins, those 6.2 millimeter pins. And then I set the temperature to 210 degrees in a 60 degree bed, said prepare to print, and was ready to send to the printer. And this was looking really, really good. I, I'm, I'm happy the way it turns out. You can see the supports here under the pins. And the time said would take two hours, just over two hours, and 13 meters of plastic. So this is a pretty quick print. So I sent it off to the Flash Forge Dreamer, and here's a quick time lapse. So I actually printed three sets, uh, multiple sets, but three different types. This one was printed with the green PLA that comes with the Flash Forge Dreamer, and it came out really nice. And then I went back and I printed with my DaVinci 1.0, my stock DaVinci 1.0, people are asking me to use DaVinci 1.0. This is an XYZ ABS red. A little bit of glue left on the bottom I need to clean up. Came out pretty good. Um, I, this is an easy print for the, the thing to handle. But the best one was the Matter Hackers PETG Pro. This stuff is amazing. It's stuck to the bed. It's got similar properties to ABS. Worked really good. So now I had three different colors. The green was for the metric sockets. The black was for my English sockets and the red was for the larger sockets. 
I got out my finishing tool and I sell these at my website just to help support the channel but they're very very handy and it's great for getting these edges there's a little bit of roughness on the edge the uh, red one had it worse the ABS had it worse but you just drag it across like this and it's not too sharp that it'll cut your finger so it works perfectly for getting that edge off off of prints and now it's nice and smooth and you just flip it over to the other side and you can do it right in here if it's if it's bad now like I said the red one off the Da Vinci needed a lot of this the PLA here and the PETG didn't need much at all but it works great to install them into the pegboard I just use a flathead screwdriver to ream out the holes just a bit so it formed like a funnel it just made it easier for pushing these in now the green one had already been in and that slid in nice and easy and still was tight the black one that was fresh I just had to push a little harder nice and tight the red actually shrunk a little bit the ABS shrunk so it was a little bit tighter to get in but once I got it in it was perfectly tight and then putting the sockets on just is easy just slide them over the pins and they're ready to use now if you're wondering how hard it is to pull one of these out especially the big ones at the bottom real easy this is one of those 3d prints that I find easy to design easy to print but incredibly useful and you probably can't find this in any store, at least not easily. So it's very, very handy to have around the shop. And like I said, makes a nice Father's Day gift. Before I send you off, though, I wanted to mention Joshua Camacho, C-A-M-A-C-H-O. He sent me the first self-addressed stamped envelope to receive a Filament Friday sticker. Now, I just announced this in the last Filament Friday. So he must have got right, right on it and sent the envelope. So because of that, Joshua, you're getting two stickers. I'll send it out right away. If you want your own Filament Friday sticker, just send me a self-addressed stamped envelope to the address that's in the description below. I'd love to see it. And send me pictures of where you posted it. I wouldn't mind seeing that as well. So that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And if you like what I'm doing here on the channel, please subscribe. We're getting real, real close to that 10K. And at 10K, I'm going to have some kind of giveaway, some kind of special giveaway I think you'll like. And if you want to help support the channel to pay for things, a dollar a month to my Patreon account, that's only like a 25 cents per filament Friday. That's all I ask. And I've got people giving me more, but that's all I ask, a dollar a month, and it really helps keep the channel going. So please consider it. So that's it for this week. I'll see you next time on Filament Friday.